Thus saith the High and Lofty One that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we chiefly to do so when we assemble together and meet to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as for the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have, have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We, we have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. hearts. We, we have, have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desirest not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and has promised to absolve all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe thy holy gospel. Of thy mercy we beseech thee to grant us true repentance and thy Holy Spirit, that those things may please thee which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to thine eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven. Hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, 
that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will always give thanks unto the Lord. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, praise the Lord with me, and let us magnify his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Yea, he delivered me out of all my fear. They had an eye unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Lo, the poor crieth, and the Lord heareth him. Yea, and saveth him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord tarrieth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye that are his saints, for they that fear him lack nothing. The lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. Come, ye children, and hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that lusteth to live, and would fain see good days. Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips that they speak no guile. Eschew evil and do good. Seek peace and ensue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The countenance of the Lord is against them that do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be of an humble spirit. Great are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all. He keepeth all his bones, so that not one of them is broken. But misfortune shall slay the ungodly, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord delivereth the souls of his servants, and all they that put their trust in him shall not be destitute. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. First lesson is written in the second book of Samuel, in the 16th chapter, beginning verse. In those days when King David came to Bahurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came, and he cast stones at David, and at all the servants of King David, and all the people, and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, thou man. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. And then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with ye, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, 
Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold my son, who came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse. For the Lord hath bidden him. It might It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along the hill side against over him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty. Thine adorable, true, and only Son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the eighth verse of the third chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter the Apostle. Beloved, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that speak no guile, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, and who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? 
But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Here beginneth the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And when they came and filled both ships, so that they began to sink, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down on Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of the servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, on the oath which he swear to our forefather Abraham that he would give us. That we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. It was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Facing the altar, let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who, was who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the, the Father, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord only, that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Grant, O Lord, we beseech thee, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by thy governance, that thy church may joyfully serve thee in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, not to any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all of their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. 
Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for Emma Adler, who is critically ill. And of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, and especially for the repose of the soul of Ray Chalfant, father of Karen Ray of this parish, who died in Atlanta last week, age 99. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace, at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. On this fifth Sunday after Trinity at St. John's Church, I know many of you were disappointed that we were not able to carry out our plan for in-person worship this morning. As announced by email on Friday, Father Dunbar is in precautionary quarantine for possible exposure to COVID-19. As some of you who have heard him on his Sunday school Zoom class can testify, he is in good spirits. He has no symptoms and looks forward to rescheduling a resumption of in-person service when that is possible. As it also happens, this coming Saturday is the anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood at St. Barnabas Ecum Secum in 1992. I know he would value your prayers for faithfulness in his ministry. Um, as I mentioned this Wednesday, uh, I'm David Sfield, the minister with youth here at St. John's, which most of you know. So. Uh, with the assistance of Carter Hubbard, who is definitely on the A team, you are getting uh, somewhat of the B team this morning. So I ask for your mercy and graciousness with me. From today's gospel, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. One of my favorite series of movies as a child was the Indiana Jones trilogy. We're not even going to mention the fourth movie. I loved the mix of action, adventure, archaeology. These movies had it all. I remember being especially disappointed as a kid that there was one scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark that I was not allowed to watch. Every time it came on, my parents told me to cover my eyes. This, of course, did not stop me from looking through my fingers. Although, in retrospect, I should have listened to my parents. You see, the scene in question is towards the end of the film. The Nazis finally have the Ark of the Covenant, which they think will help them tap into divine power and take over the world. Of course, God's presence is not something to be played with. Indy knows this, and tells his partner, Marianne, whatever you do, don't open your eyes. When I looked through my fingers as a boy, I saw someone's face melt off, literally. When the ark is opened, everyone dies. Everyone, that is, except Indy and his partner, Marianne, who had covered their eyes. You may ask yourself, what in the world does that have to do with today's lessons? Today's gospel from Luke deals with the same basic issue as Raiders of the Lost Ark. What is the proper human response to the presence of God? With that in mind, let's turn to the Gospel of Luke. 
One of the things that is unique about St. Luke's Gospel is that we don't find out exactly how the disciples first meet Jesus. The interaction we see in the lesson today makes clear that Simon, Simon Peter, James, and John already knew Jesus. Of course, Jesus' reputation preceded him. Simon, James, and John would have heard about everything he had done. Word of Jesus' teaching and miracles had spread throughout the region of Galilee. So it was likely not a shock to them that Jesus was teaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, which happened to be where Simon, James, and John ran their fishing business. The crowds had gathered to listen to Jesus, and specifically Luke tells us to hear the word of God. While Jesus is teaching, he looks out and sees fishermen outside their boats, washing their nets on the shore. With clear purpose, Jesus steps into Simon's boat and asks him to put out into the water. We read that Jesus then sits and begins to teach the people. Now, I had the opportunity to attend my friend's ordination to the priesthood, and the bishop who ordained him, when it came time for the homily, uh, two uh, assistants, two altar servers, brought out this chair and set it right in front of the altar, and the bishop sat and gave the homily sitting down from a seat. I had never seen that before. But what that communicated, both in the current world and in the ancient world, is someone sitting is in a place of authority. So we see Jesus teaching authoritatively from inside the boat. So, after Jesus finished teaching, he asked Simon to go out into the deep water and to put down his nets. Now, one of the things that really jumps out at you when you read the Gospels is Simon Peter's personality. He's clearly one of those guys who doesn't have an unarticulated thought. You never have to wonder what he's thinking. Clearly, he is skeptical about what Jesus has asked him to do. And yet, Simon acknowledges Jesus' authority and says, call over the other boat to help him. And even with both boats, there are so many fish that the boats begin to sink. Now, Simon is a fisherman, a man who needs to make a living as one commentator, business opportunity, and say something like, Jesus, 50% of my business is yours. You do not have to go out on the boat with us every night. You do not have to labor on the docks and repair the nets. All you need to do is come down here once a month and do the trick you just did, filling my nets. But that is not Simon's response. Instead, he falls down on his knees, and he asks Jesus to leave. Depart from me, he says. He may not have been able to fully explain it at the time, but Simon knew that he was in the presence of holiness, someone completely different than anyone he had ever met before. Why was this Simon's response? The reality is that we come face to face with the holiness of God, the difference, the otherness, God's perfection. And in light of that reality, Simon knew he was exposed as a sinful man. Back in the book of Exodus, the Lord told Moses when he revealed himself on Mount Sinai, no one can see my face and live. Just like the ending of Raiders of the Lost Ark, sinful humanity cannot look at God and live. It would literally kill us. We couldn't handle it. At this point, Jesus could have literally melted Simon's face off if he wanted to. And Simon knows it, which is why he asks Jesus to leave. But in the acknowledgement of his sinfulness, that is when Jesus draws near to Simon. Just as Indy and his friend are spared because they chose not to look at the covenant, so we see in Simon the seeds of faith, which is the gift of God. When we think we can stand on our own. When we think we're really not that bad, God's holy perfection proves us wrong and we're exposed. But when in the light of God's presence we humble ourselves and acknowledge our sin, we receive mercy and grace. And even the ability to acknowledge our sin is a gift from God. It's grace all the way down. Jesus draws near to Simon, and instead of melting his face off, Jesus speaks a word of peace. 
Now Simon knew Jesus' word was powerful. He had just seen it create fish where there were none. That's why the crowds were following Jesus, to hear the word of God. God's word is why Simon was in this situation in the first place. He heard the words of Christ to go out into the lake again and responded in faith. And Jesus was true to his word. Simon got more fish than he could handle. And here again, even in the midst of his fear, Jesus tells Simon, do not be afraid. This is not the same as you and I telling someone to calm down or to chill out. Jesus' word is a creative, active word. So when Jesus tells Simon not to be afraid, Jesus is removing his fear and replacing it with peace. But Jesus goes even further. He speaks a word of promise to Simon. From now on, Simon, instead of catching fish, you will catch men. And again, Jesus is not giving Simon a strong suggestion here. Jesus is pronouncing a new reality in Simon's life. And God's word does what it says. And not only Simon, but also James and John heard it too. Empowered by God's word, they left everything and followed Jesus. To become fishers of men, bringing people into God's kingdom through Jesus. The prophet Isaiah tells us that God's word never returns void but accomplishes that what he pleases. Today, in your hearing, we have the privilege of hearing the word of God, the word of Christ. And instead of closing our eyes like Indiana Jones, and instead of asking Jesus to leave like Simon Peter did, we can respond in repentance and faith. We can hear Christ's word of peace, a word that does what it says, so that just like the disciples, we can leave everything and follow Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Father of, all of all mercies, mercies. We, we thine unworthy servants, servants do give, give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our preservation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up the countenance of his face upon us and give us peace both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Grab that mic. We'll put that mic back.